The death penalty has been used in Western civilization for a long time. The change in the methods of execution is to me a real interesting phenomenon because it talks about how we want to tidy up murder, uh, murder by the state. At one point, executions were sort of a public thing. In the United States, public hangings were spectacles people would go to. As a matter of fact, there are a number of books that show collections of postcards of people attending lynchings in the U.S. Later on, we've tried to think about execution as a medical procedure, and so we've tried to make something scientific about it. So we either have an electric chair, which was kind of coldly, and they say, I want this person dead. That people feel a need for revenge, that people want to be vindicated, is a human reaction. It's an honest reaction. They have to be listened to. They have to be sympathized with. They have to be respected. There's no question about that. But that doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. That doesn't mean that we should become an instrument of somehow revenging what happened to them. And if you ask someone if this happened to your sister, if this happened to your brother, if this happened to your mom, wouldn't you want the death penalty for that person? That isn't how the state is supposed to work. The state is not, it isn't for the victims ultimately at all. So the death penalty doesn't deter crime. The death penalty doesn't seem to make victims feel any better. The death penalty seems to be applied unfairly. It seems to have racist roots where if you kill a white person, you're much more likely to get the death penalty than if you kill a black person or a Hispanic person. Everywhere in Western Europe has stopped things that are there. We begin to realize how difficult these questions are and we develop a certain humility. We develop an ability to say, I don't have all the answers. And until I have all the answers, there's no way I can put a human life on the line for this. He goes back to headquarters in Goa, but he knows that there is another world out there. There's a lot of exploration going on, and he travels over a really, really arduous journey to the next Portuguese colony in between what is today Indonesia and Malaysia. in Malacca and he does several journeys around all this Indonesian archipelago, he meets the first Japanese that he's ever met. And it's one of the first Japanese that ever got to outside Japan, a man called Anjiro. Moreover, he recognizes from Anjiro that these people are not just, pardon the word, savages. This is a very cultured country. It's a very civilized country. doesn't know anything about Buddhism. And the warm welcome which he'd been led to expect that he would go up there, it really didn't come. So he's a man of invention and a man of imagination, and I think that's what he has to say to us. The world is big, our hearts have to be big, and our imagination has to be big. <laughs> <laughs>